Welcome back to another episode of Data Science at Home podcast. I'm uh, Francesco and podcasting from Brussels City, Belgium. Uh, this is Data Science at Home. I will be your host for the next uh, 30, maybe more today, <laughs> minutes, because we're going to cover a very interesting topic, which is about detecting artificial intelligence. And of course, I'm not going to do this alone. I'm going to do this to experts in the field and researchers. Uh, PhD grad student Suradip Chakraborty, which I definitely mispronounce, <laughs> probably not, and uh, uh, Amrit Singh Bedi uh, from the Computer Science Faculty at University of Central Florida. Hello, guys. How are you doing today? Yeah, doing good. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Francisco. Uh, I hope I pronounce your name well. Uh, thank you so much for the invitation, and uh, we are really excited to be here and and talk to you on the topic of uh, AI-generated text detection. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction and for the invitation, Francesco. And uh, we are really excited for uh, talking about this crucial topic at these current times. Thank you. That's a pleasure indeed. And uh, indeed, I could not do this alone because um, um, there is some research that you guys are conducting uh, you know, about detecting artificial intelligence, in particular, detecting, um, you know, distinguishing, in fact, uh, ge text generated by uh, large language models, hopefully, <laughs> and, uh, and humans, uh, which is a very hot topic these days uh, that I believe that many people are ignoring. Uh, and that will lead us towards a lot of issues if we cannot you know, manage to do that, like to distinguish something that comes from an AI or a, a real human, um, there, are, there can be a lot of risks. And uh, Amrit, probably you're the best candidate here in the room who can tell us what are uh, these potential risks that we might encounter if we fail at detecting that a particular text that we read somewhere, uh, you know, was written by a human being or not. Yeah, hey, I think... <clears throat> I think as you mentioned, it is really important. So let me take a step back and uh, tell you how we started uh, working on it or like how we thought this is like a very interesting problem, right? I still remember, I think in, in December 2022, uh, Swaradeep was attending a conference, uh, NeurIPS conference, and then uh, like suddenly this uh, GPT was released, right? Open AI GPT, and then everybody was utilizing it and they were like really shocked and excited, like, okay, it can really write text like we do like we as a human do like there were other text generators before uh, before even open ai uh, but they were not that good but this was like when you ask it or prompt it to write something it would really like it as if it was written by some human so we all were were, were like really excited and then as we as the time passed like the, as the excitement passed then we started thinking about the issues like what issues it can create right now uh, the the understanding was gone or let's just say the difference between real and fake was over right like now if i'm looking at a piece of text before uh, gpt or open ai search at least we were sure that it is written by some human somewhere right wherever we see a piece of text uh, on internet in books and everywhere but now we can't believe like uh, we don't know whether it is written by some human or not whether that piece of text is factually correct or not it contains the correct information and then we suddenly started uh, like thinking about, oh, it can create a lot of issues. Somebody can just write a simple prompt, create a big news article and then put it online. And uh, nobody is liable for that. And that can actually create and that article could be like sp could spread hate in the society and it can try to influence people. And it is very easy to write these big posts on social media, for example. So that's what we are our motivation started to look at this detection problem and then we started working on it. I, I'm sure Sardeep uh, must have something to say on this, but, but yeah, that, that was our motivation. Yeah. 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 I, and that, I believe that's already happening, by the way, the fact that these, you know, fake news are already, you know, written very easily and spread uh, on the internet. Uh, Sardeep, if you want to add something or if you want to maybe give me or give us uh, a, a, an overview about your research because now I'm curious uh, what exactly do you research like uh, definitely not large language models so specifically right yeah 
Yeah, I think uh, currently my main research is focusing uh, focused around the safety of uh, language models and generative models in general to ensure that the deployment of these models are safe, are uh, it's harmless, and it's and it does not spread any hate and uh, and it, it does not spread any unaligned behaviors. So the main point that I'm researching in is uh, alignment, which is a very very important and crucial topic at this point of time. And, and additionally, there are related things like uh, like safety uh, and then uh, privacy and all these things come as a byproduct of this. But the broader field which I'm researching is alignment of generative models. I see. Very, very interesting. So, I mean, uh, we already know that there is something fishy happening on social media, on the news, especially mm. during uh, the elections uh, in many countries around the world. Uh, war propaganda uh, I mean online reviews all this is happening because you know these tools are very accessible to you know everyone very easy to use as well um, now my question is how um, you know reliable are the tools that we have in detecting whether a piece of writing was generated by an AI okay uh, I think um... This is a very good point, first of all, uh, because uh, um, uh, currently a lot of these methods, a lot of uh, AI uh, text detectors are being used to detect various purposes. But I want to highlight and emphasize on these points that uh, this many of these uh, detectors are not truly or not, not extremely reliable because all of these detectors are uh, eventually a machine learning model, right? Many of these detectors, I would say that they are eventually a machine learning model or a classifier or some sort of a generator, but they suffer from the standard issues that any machine learning model will su suffer, right? Like for example, bias, for example, uh, the data, data set based bias. If there is, there is some group or some data where there is uh, less data from that group, then naturally the machine learning model will be a little biased against that group. So these are standard uh, issues that this uh, data set, uh, the, the current AI detectors are facing. And there was some recent study by, I think, James Zhou's group from Stanford who showed that there are indeed, there are this, this kind of biases against certain groups that the detectors are facing. Having said that, but I would still say that uh, Although there is, there are biases, and so are the biases in any any machine learning model, right? But still, we use them, and we have been improving them. So that's what our goal is: to improve the detectors and to improve it to a level where that it will be very it it will be very efficient and uh, reliable and robust. Yeah, just just uh -huh. as a quick uh, quick addition to what uh, Sardeep mentioned, all these issues also arises uh, from the fact that which is a fundamental limitation of our machine learning models, which are like deep neural network based models, uh, even in terms of a classifier, like we know, even if it is for performing really well, like we give it an input and it is able to classify what it is, whether it is AI generated text or not. But the explainability part of this is still a fundamental challenge in ML in general, because we don't understand why it classified, like we just check the output and then say how accurate it is and then give some statistical understanding with respect to some test data set. Okay, out of 100, 99% of time it was doing good. But why it did, why it lead to that label at the output is because we lack that understanding. The same issue would arise when we develop an AI generated text detector, right? Because we don't know why it said or it classified a given piece of text as AI written or human written. We don't know. We just rely on this like accuracy and then somebody can really perturb the input or do some paraphrasing at the input to fool the detectors. So I, at some level, it is really connected with the explainability uh, problem of, of advanced machine learning models. You raised a very valid point, yeah. which is a very well-known issue in yeah. machine learning, indeed yeah. the problem of explainability and, you know, using detectors, especially the, the neural ones, yes. uh, as, as black boxes, yes, yes. they say. So black, black boxing, provides. I would say, is a very big issue. Like, uh, because we don't know why it is working. If it is working, it is good. That is also led to another issue of reliability. Like, it is working, but I don't know in future if something new came and then there is some distribution yeah. shift with the sample. If it will work or not, we don't know. So that explainability, reliability, all these issues are very much connected, which were like standard, I think in ML also, and now they even become more, more critical with all these, all these applications. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 
And uh, actually, I have one observation about this because even when you, I don't know, I saw some detectors on the, some papers around um, around 85, a bit less than 90% accuracy in you know detecting uh, an artificial intelligence from a human. Um, I think it was for paragraphs. Uh, we'll we'll discuss a bit more uh, extensively later, uh, but I was thinking like even in those cases, eighty five percent today there are like you know billions of queries around the world only on you know GPT models. So eighty five percent means that fifteen percent of these billions queries are you know go undetected, and that's still a very big number. <laughs> so you know it's like uh, I don't know, it's like uh, autonomous cars that have like an accuracy of not hitting an obstacle. 99 point something percent of the time right but yeah you make billions of miles around the world and th those are a lot of accidents and a lot of victims <laughs> i mean god forbid okay so the problem is absolutely fascinating i mean if there are researchers like yourself out there working on this stuff i think this is like spot on for research and i definitely hope that you know there will be results even though i believe that is there will be more like a cat and mouse uh, scenario because of you know for sure researchers will try to improve something and the other guys usually the bad guys will try to you know fool your detectors in a, this never-ending game but in any case we'll do our best you guys promise or you are doing your best in solving this problem and we believe you now uh, to be more technical because you know on this show there are a lot of nerds and uh, and we love science especially when it's a, a applied to <laughs> to machine learning and AI um if you want to dig a bit more into you know into the subject um you know there are for example uh, you know detect G detect gpt is one of those methods that is actually very well known to the community um and then there are watermarking techniques so maybe uh, i think you are the best candidate in the room again to uh, enlighten us with the watermarking techniques and what is the current approach that uh, uh, you know, can be comparable to to such um, detection method. Hmm. Uh, okay, maybe I'll just uh, uh, take this first and try to explain the basics, basic principles behind watermarking, and then maybe uh, Amrit, you can expand and uh, discuss around the implications. So I think watermarking uh, is one of the most most powerful methods that has emerged uh, for as a detection tool, as a method for detecting. And, uh, and one of the uh, very famous papers came from our university itself, uh, from uh, Tom Goldstein's lab. And, uh, and it was also one of the best papers in one of very top conference in machine learning because, because of its effect that it has created. So on a very high level, what Watermark does is it tries to, it tries to change the distribution of the response and it tries to change it in a certain way so that it can be easily detected after it is after after it is generated and uh, if if we go into the nitty gritty details of this let's go through that so what happens in watermark is so naturally in language models we know how it is generated what happens is first token comes then uh, so basically it is a token by token generation in what happens in language model so it, it takes an input of the previous token and it, it generates uh, next token from the based on the uh, based on the top k token so basically let's say given the input it sees what what are the top k likely tokens and then it generates the next base token by sampling from the distribution or uh, greedily uh, by taking the maximum likelihood one what watermark did is it selected a list of green and uh, red list so green list is the list of tokens or words which which are allowed to be generated and red list is the list which is not allowed so for and and this partitioning is is known to us let's say by by inputting some like by some fixed seed so i can by if i know the seed i exactly know the partition in the vocabulary space so that is known to us so that then what what uh, what happens is and it is generally 50 50 percent unless there are advanced techniques which actually controls the the division but what happens now once you know this partition is that given an input token you the distribution over the next tokens is now partition right so now there are only few uh, like there are limited words which are from the green list that can only occur so for every time for every time point when you generate you can only generate from the green list right and not from the red list so this kind of uh, changes the pattern of generation now now you know that uh, there is a very high probability that 
if if all your words are from the green list in a in a particular question then this is naturally uh, machine generated or if if they are from red list then it means that if all the words let's say or a lot of words are from red list then it is possible that it is human generated gotcha so yeah this is how yeah <laughs> yeah so just just Thank to you. just to add a, a, a summary summary to that point on a technical level what we are doing and f- from my perspective because my background is in signal processing my phd was in signal processing so it really comes from uh, like um, even signal detection idea of like when you want to detect something and then you add your your key or let's just say your signal uh, with 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 whatever the data and so that at the at the user end you can you can get that signal it's like encrypting a message right we add something our own and then at the at the other end we can look for our message if that key was there so it means it is coming from one particular person in the same way i am forcing by watermarking forcing my llm to uh, generate in a particular manner i'm trying to add a key to it rather than just Uh, generating as it was doing i try to change its distribution according to me like i i change it a little bit and then i will check whether at the user end now i know how much i changed right i will try to use or i will try to detect that change at the at the, at the, for the generated text so if i am able to see that change i'll say it is generated by machine otherwise not so that's the conceptual that's the idea yeah it's it's quite clever it's like adding a signature essentially adding a signature and, uh, it's yeah whatever is the english meaning of watermark it's exactly that like you are adding a key and a signature to your yeah. to your generated text and as for the mention what it is trying to do is you are trying to control the vocabulary or the token it can generate signal from and then you are forcing right. it to generate just from this part and then at the user end you would see like okay if it is coming from that part you know there is a watermark in it and then you detected it is generated by ai if there is no watermark most likely it is not written by ai it is written by human that's the basic principle uh, clever idea yeah, which has awesome. also been used in encryption, encryption and other areas but yeah yeah. So, like, yeah indeed i was saying that like it, it's funny to see how uh, let's say old school tech is actually repurposed for yeah, yeah. because i problems. think it's a new area all of the old school ideas going to be again applied on llm and its related applications and we will see new new uh, new <laughs> applications and new ideas coming in the context of llm actually yeah, yeah. okay yeah. exactly and just adding one small point to that i i feel that uh, already also that although these are uh, old school ideas and all but i feel the ideas of hypothesis testing information theory all these are very principled and lucid principled. ideas and they will always always be used whenever there are new applications and new yeah. so that that's the of course yeah and th- that was kind of one of our main uh, motivation and excitement like we were able to utilize this fundamental ideas from information theory and statistics to this advanced application of language model and detection so that was the, our uh, excitement yeah. yeah old good shannon yeah. uh, always yeah. there <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all yeah. right well no it's it's very nice it's very fascinating topics these are as old as uh, I don't know computer science itself in fact or information theory in fact it's like you cannot escape that. All right. Um uh well there is one thing that I want to um ask you guys uh which is related to uh let's say the uh, difficulty of detecting something based on the length of the of the text that you are processing right? So for example if you go you know detecting if um a machine wrote just three words let's say i love you <laughs> whoever was was forwarded to uh it's much easier for a machine to you know impersonate a human being and make the detection pretty much impossible with respect to for example having an entire pamphlet or a very large document you know then it's going to be more and more difficult so my question is can you explain the relationship between the length of the document word sentences paragraphs versus the challenging task of detecting artificial uh, intelligence text from human text yeah maybe i can start with this to answering this and then uh, sorry deep can follow up with that so so i think this is a very very important question you raised and when we were again I'll, i i like to tell story from 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 the back times so i'll go back again and then we started thinking about this problem right and then there was a very basic idea of like okay we want to detect something whether it is coming from ai or not but at least what i had in my mind is 
like when we are calling somebody called us right over phone and then if they say one or two words we are not able to detect who is who is speaking right but when they start saying something long we are able to quickly recognize who 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 is speaking right we yeah. know that it's very easy so what is the equivalent of that in language that's where it, it the idea starts from and then we did some empirical evaluation saying that as you clearly mentioned you mentioned i love you and we have our own example of hello world if i have just these two words nobody can tell whether it is written by ai or human but as we did some basic experiments and we started increasing the length of the text given to any state of the art detector which were available to us at that instance of time we saw an improvement in the detection accuracy like we were able to detect more and more if the length of the text is long so let's say we have more tokens to detect and that stems like okay that really fueled our excitement and motivation to develop some interesting connection like why it is happening what is the fundamental principles which can explain this like why the length improves the detection accuracy and that is where we went back to the basics of like as you mentioned information theory and then what we saw is why the problem of uh, detecting an ai generated text is hard if we assume our ai generated text is coming from a distribution let's just say that is machine distribution and then that there is a true distribution of human from where human samples and then the basic underlying understanding in the community is our language models or machine distribution is becoming closer and closer to human distribution and that is the only reason why we are not able to differentiate any difference between both the things and we know like and then total variation is a measure to evaluate the distance between two distributions which is symmetric also so if two distribution are uh, like similar from it is very trivial to know that okay we can't differentiate between those of things so it means we wanted to connect how the total variation distance between two distribution changes with respect to the number of tokens in the text and that is where we developed a connection from the basics of information theory that is where this chain of information is coming and we get a, and it it exists in the literature which tells us that how the number of samples are connected with the total variation norm between two distributions and from there we connected those number of samples with the number of tokens generated in the text and that is where we know that as the number of samples increases the total variation between the distribution expands like it increases it means even if with let's just say less number of tokens those distributions were very similar between human and machine but as we increase the number of tokens the eventual distributions in that n dimensional space are very very far from each other and we should be able to detect but yeah i mean i think saradeep can add right saradeep, yeah yeah i think pretty much what you said it summarizes what uh, the entire process is but a uh, uh, little more in a in a technical example like it will be like let's say if we have a biased coin and and then we do not know the bias now if just somebody gives me the uh, the de- report of one one toss of a coin it can be head and it can be tail i cannot say that whether there is a bias or not right but whenever i get some 100 uh, uh, like 100 Uh, trials and i get the sample space of the 100 trials then i can definitely tell that what is the bias and as this number increases so for example if the bias of the coin is very close to 0.5 let's say it is 0.52 then we can understand that we need more and more and more, more number of trials to tell so that's that was a very simple principled idea and we tried that and empirically we showed and we saw that exactly that happens that exactly follows right is that a by heart i mean just out of curiosity do you have uh, some numbers for which you can say look if the paragraph is this many tokens you have this much percentage to of, of chance to detect the difference hmm uh, just uh, i'll take this uh, as a, the first part so basically i think it's a good point but having said that there is no fixed number uh, which is domain independent so so we cannot have a number that i can tell oh 30 maybe for a domain like law or maybe for a domain like uh, uh, clinic clinical domains there it it the, the the language that chat gpt generates is still far far from how doctors would write or doctors would think or see so in that case we will need uh, less number of uh, samples even right. with a smaller text you can easily understand but it's if a domain, domain like maybe some sort of uh, let's say a poetry uh, or or something like which is little more creative and all uh and more more general let's say a description about uh, arizona let's say so that can that can be much more closer to how some human would generate and that yeah. can be we might need a little more context to to separate 
yeah uh, and and i think uh, add, adding on to that there are definitely empirical observations as already mentioned like if the the text is more or the domain is like like writing an english text llms are very good in doing that and we need more number of samples to detect there but if it goes into the domain of like like reasoning task or planning tasks or like solving a mathematical equation we know they are not that good and that is where it would be easy to detect and and another angle to it what you asked is a very is a very important like technical question and if i'm not wrong i think it is still an open research problem where we need to connect the number of samples when we fix the domain how many number of samples do we need to actually achieve certain level of accuracy that theoretical connection is still open and true to best of my knowledge yes. yeah also because uh, okay i understand it's domain specific yeah. the number of tokens so the length of the paragraphs it's domain specific but domains keep changing even as we speak yeah uh, machine learning models get fine tuned overnight yeah. sometimes that's why the problem uh, is hard right <laughs> <laughs> very yeah. uh, no no i just uh, <laughs> i wanted to make this clear yeah, yeah. like uh, people out there this is serious this is very serious yeah <laughs> it is and very challenging yeah, yeah. It, okay. is, it is very hard it is like the let's just say you fix you create a detector and spend a lot of effort for a one particular model and then the company comes up with another model like after one month and whole research is gone now like maybe you can utilize exactly. the idea but maybe it doesn't work at all yeah yes that's exactly my next question like what do the bad guys let's say those who try to fool the detectors have at their disposal in order to uh you know circumvent this uh, uh statistical measures that you guys have domain specific statistical measures of course yeah i think so, i can i can start with the basic answers to that i think you really touched uh, upon the attacking uh, part to the ai generated text detector like if if somebody creates a very nice detector which is able to detect but there are papers which really discuss about the robustness of those detectors and they try to attack those detectors for example uh, they know that okay if you give a certain piece of text written by ai and the detector is able to detect but they will try to rephrase that input using the same llm try to write it in a manner that they can easily fool the detector so paraphrasing at, uh, attack they call like paraphrase attacks which are like very popular and works really well i believe like they are very hard to be robust against in in practice but they are means using utilizing these that is very basic example but there are other lot of ways which people have been have developed to so, to do yeah. sorry amrit so this is the equivalent of uh, adversarial attacks for computer vision right exactly exactly okay yeah. gotcha or and in general like whenever there is an ml model right there are adversarial attack so now that ml model is a detector there right. will be adversarial attack to those detectors yeah, yeah. sure so, sorry go ahead I, i i just got into the i wanted to break in sure, 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 sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. sorry they can add to it i think mm, yeah i think i i agree uh, exactly to what amrit said that a uh, paraphrasing basically as i discussed watermark right so it creates a pattern pattern in the response generated so it, it is like generating from the green list and all but now what what you do is when you paraphrase it so you are just ruining the pattern right so you are trying to say that okay i can still again there will be words from the red list and then again the the detector will be confused that whether it is a machine or ai generated um, human generated so there are there are these things that that makes it really challenging and paraphrase i think to the best of my knowledge there are the paraphrasing attack is still one of the strongest attack that 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 actually fools fools the detectors to do that and i think that is a very good thing that we have a very clear well defined research question because once we have a research question we can solve it so we are all working on on it uh, on different perspective maybe we'll we'll touch upon the solutions in some other question yeah. okay so now there is there are some consequences of all this of course um in the sense that we just said it like uh, the day the two distributions will become you know pretty much the same it's going to be statistically impossible or statistically very hard to distinguish them and that's a matter of fact okay now with this said what can happen i'm just you know running my mind uh that you make a detector that is kind of you know uh blocking me because he thinks i am an artificial intelligence uh you know because there is 50-50 chance to 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 detect but also to misdetect uh 
this would lead to I don't know ethical issues or you know AI that blocks humans in fact or or what do you think of this yeah so uh, so I think you you again uh, touched upon an important point I think technically you are really asking about the true positive and false positive right of the detector Correct. and interestingly I think the definition of a good detector automatically capture that that thing like if you say my true positives are like uh, 90% but my false positive was also 70% that's not a good detector so the definition because we try to look at the area under the curve which called roc curve uh, which will tell whether my detector is good or not so yeah, and we say when the area under the curve goes towards one that's the best detector and the kind of detector which would have that is actually the one which have high true positive but very small false positive that's the ideal detector we want so it is embedded in the definition of a good detector so i cannot say a detector is good let's just say if you have 100% true positive rate but your false positive rate is also 80% that's a bad detector that's not a good detector so so that definition uh, by definition if we will have access to a good detector it means it is doing less of the false positives but yeah means if they are there we can't do anything with that yeah right yeah well okay um, now i have a question regarding um you know the limits of technologies uh in the sense that every technology comes with its limitations and that's you know since the history of of humanity um now the problem is this i um have i will reach we will reach the point in which for certain domains there will be uh basically you know indistinguishability uh between the two gener uh, generative ais and humans uh will we reach a point in which uh technology cannot help us and probably only regulation will or only laws legal uh limit you know legal aspects of technology will let's say solve the problem what do you guys think of that yeah i think uh, this is also a very hard question but i think there are several uh, uh several directions of it so first of all i think as you are rightly saying that as technology becomes more and more complex it becomes or more and more advanced it becomes um, very similar to human distribution right machines become very similar to human but then there is a question that we have not addressed till now is like it becomes similar to which human right mm -hmm. because there are there is so much diversity in the in the humans population that we do not know that if the machines can like equally match to all the human distribution or not or, or and if it is not then it is match, matching to just some specific distributions right so we need to address that question first and and have a clear clear understanding of that and the second thing is that it is true that in many cases the machine will be closer to the accurate distribution let me phrase it in this way so if if i'm asking it to write a code it writes the accurate code if i'm asking it to write the math it writes the accurate math but that was also the purpose of creating this uh, generative models right that it should it should be able to do that so that was the very basic purpose of doing that so we do not need detection at everything right so we do not need to detect every any and everything that the machine generates that's not needed but probably we need detection in in cases where it either harms the safety or it causes some plagiarism issues or maybe some uh, some te cheating related aspects where it can cause so these are some cases which are or some domains where we need detection and we should use the detectors very carefully it's not like we we use the detectors like uh, just anywhere and everywhere it's not for that it's for the safety uh, for the society and at, so that it is it is harmless and it is not causing any misinformation so we should detect in in on those cases and that is very important that we choose the domain and we do correctly and just one last sentence regarding the legal issue is i think i completely agree that i don't think that we we cannot use technology blindly and uh, do this actions we need legal and we need the help of law and proper legal uh, procedures to do that but i think even we cannot do it completely legally also right like for the for from the legal perspective also from a from a lawyer how would he understand if two texts are very similar how if they are generated by machines or human right so they need machines so we, we machine learning so i think both these two should operate hand in hand to come to some uh, reasonable solution yeah please yeah so to that part I, i i completely agree and i would like to add another analogy uh, to this so th think think of driving right like uh, we are driving cars on the roads right so 
and when when we started like we had the cars and then i i believe there were no regulations or we were not even decided which side of the road we should drive right of course like when we started but then when people saw that okay this is a new thing we have cars now we can drive would really need to make rules to actually make it useful for everybody for the society to grow right otherwise there the the probability of accident would be really high and then we came up with regulations like okay you drive on one side of the road and then there you you follow the stop sign there are traffic lights and we keep on adding more and more rules to things for the people to use these new technology for example which is like car in at that time like they so they can use it utilize it and do not try to harm each other but still accident happens but the goal is to minimize them and then still make some rules which can really help everybody to come on a consensus to utilize that i believe something like that would really be for uh, this uh, new ai technology also definitely there should be some rules so that everybody can come to agree to those rules and then yeah if you don't follow those rules there will be some uh, liabilities and some some issues Consequent. of course and then that only makes a perfect sense and we cannot really rely on like people like okay okay under the belief that okay everybody is going to make a good use of ai and then let leave it there i think regulations are going to be really really important and uh, to to reg- and we have i i believe like in the history we have done that for everything right like there are regulations for everything mm-hmm. whatever new came we understand it and then now there comes regulation and now things become stable right we have done that yeah. for electricity we have done that for uh, like cars we have done that for airplanes everything and then i think ai is the next big from we have done that for uh, mobile communication right there are proper regulations right communication i was right? saying that we yes. have done that right yeah. so and they and they, they were not there like 50 years ago like this wireless things yeah. but now everything is so i think for anything to actually uh, be streamlined in the society we definitely need uh, regulations and yeah i ho- i hope they help uh, in the, in the in the development of good good and safe ai for everyone yeah you are saying something that is extremely important and uh, and very actual because indeed uh, every new technology Uh, you know at the beginning is like you know the the far west you know there is like everyone abuses and everyone tries to find countermeasures and everything and then slowly it starts getting regulated and and then it becomes a part of society for which indeed um you know people have to respect yeah just just imagine when, when when people would have came up with the camera right they started making movies there must be not regulation in the starting and they were making everything anything now there come the sensor board and everything oh, like for the society to grow and everything this is other you need yeah. to go through these good even if it is a creative business you need to go through these rules to actually operate and yeah. i think same thing would happen for ai also yeah. i i want to say something for example very recently a few years ago drones uh, you cannot fly a drone and and watch the neighbors you know um <laughs> so and and this there is no technology that allows you to do that you can always fly, fly a drone but there is a rule that says you cannot do that you can still do it physically but you are you know violating the rule and a law and so yeah that's it all right uh we we made it clear because there were people a few months ago who wanted to stop research in ai for like six months or something like that would be so stupid in my opinion because it doesn't solve the problem and thank god there are some smart people out there that said no guys don't stop research knowledge is something that you cannot stop in fact you have to learn how to deal with the new thing Uh, uh, instead of instead of stopping yeah i i okay. I, i believe like sure. i think uh, yeah means defining problems is very important according to me i think i think sauradeep also touched upon that part i think like when somebody is th- some some danger is there right i think the clear definition of the problem is very important so that people can spend effort on solving that because we need a solution for that actually right if there is a there's a safety issue with ai we really need to solve that and we need to start yeah. act now yeah. we need to solve that problem rather than leaving it right like so yeah. we need to solve exactly. it yeah. but i would uh, i i have a slightly different opinion on that and i i have uh, in the sense because i mean obviously uh, uh, what you guys are saying is absolutely right and uh, we cannot stop stop science to do research and obviously that will harm but i think uh, their intention was very good the intention was that that there are a lot of this that there are a lot of releases that are happening of very advanced models uh, without really understanding them right so we do not yet understand that what is how they are performing so well or what are the issues why they are how can we control the uh, harmful generations and everything and and at that at that stage one one proposal was that that we can stop the release 
for at least six months and try to understand it. And then once it is understood, during that six months, we will not stop science. We will be doing science for the society. So their intention was very good. And I feel, if I'm not wrong, one of the person who, who was there involved recently got Nobel Prize. So I feel... Yeah. Uh, they have uh, yeah i think the, the 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 i think i i totally agree the the intentions are intentions were really right and it was more about like rather than just running for the next model next model let's take a take a break and understand them like what they're doing right like i think that and that is very important again it goes back to explainability concept like we really need to see like why they are so good right like what is actually happening yeah. and once we go with that explainability and next model that makes everything automatically very safe Exactly. Yeah, I I think that that release, uh, ne ne uh, never stop releasing idea was more because AI is not the AI that we know from the 80s and 90s. It's more marketing AI for which there is this uh, race to to release on a daily basis almost. Yeah. Uh, you know, because there are um, companies around you know, and behind that, and we don't make names, but. You always know who I'm referring to. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, of course, they have this need to en enhance or, or amaze people with new models and new, more powerful, uh, one or more powerful yes. things. Uh, Suradip, your, your shirt is very nice. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's for those who are on the, <laughs> on the podcast, uh, only sound there. Well, I will spell your your t-shirt it says the future is yours <laughs> create it it's amazing uh so speaking about the future uh what would you consider be the most promising future direction uh, for ai detection techniques yeah uh maybe okay i'll i'll, I'll take this answer so uh, so first of all i think i i'm no visionary to say that uh, and I think there are a lot of uh, visionaries uh, and big uh, names who are actually uh, looking towards that. But I think uh, at least I can touch upon the brief, basic, basic overview or topics, which I think is very important. I think as I have been a proponent from the beginning of safety and harmlessness de deployment of AI, so I feel uh, alignment is a very, very important topic that it aligns to social values, to human behaviors, because as generative AI becomes more and more complex, we 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 start we might start losing control right we might because it it, it might be controlled by the data and then the distribution uh, it it will automatically generate a lot of things like we do not have a lot of control so how do we ensure controlled generation is something that is very important and how do we ensure that it is aligned and it reasons like how human reasons or it it reasons in a more logical and in a more harmless in a more uh, uh, way uh, human humanity should not be lost that is the main thing that the human humanity should not be lost so alignment is one very important topic that i feel will be important and other topics includes explainability like we should be able to explain why it is happening right because it, like for example if you ask me i know why i am doing something it's explain well explain explainability and then there are different principles that can help help explainability like causality like what is the cause of this thing? So causality, I feel at some point will be a very important field. And and in general, and in general, all these things I, I feel are inherently sequential. So everything, it's not like a IID based thing now. It's everything is sequential and all the events are related to each other. So I feel reinforcement learning in general is a very, very important topic that has brought successes at every uh, ages when science was, at least when machine learning was stuck. So maybe just another one line that we had. So these language models that we are seeing now, we had these language models in 2019. So Transformer came, I think, on 2018, uh, the paper on self-attention. And then there was BERT, which had that brought that success. But still, uh, the language as a field was not able to generate coherent, grammatically correct and very nice sentences. So the reinforcement learning from human feedback this uh, and fine tuning with this kind of feedback actually uh, took a step where model was LLM were stuck. So I feel reinforcement learning has been a pioneer uh, and I, I would motivate everybody who is learning new things to also consider this and see because I feel genuinely feel value in that. Thank you for, so much for sharing this. Amrit, do you want to add something? We are Almost there to say goodbye. Unfortunately, I could continue this conversation for a couple of hours. But... Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. It is really interesting. No, I think I I, I agree. Whatever uh, Saradeep described, but just to add to that, like 
I, I will not favor one idea over the other. I am truly believe in the diversity of ideas. I think all are important and we don't know which one is going to break and which one going to work. So there are lots of ideas around even detecting AI text. You should go through like uh, like a post detection, pre detection. You need to do watermarking or you need to develop just a classifier between AI generated tests and machine generated tests. I think all are equally important. And then we need to really invest in all of them and then which one takes the lead and works, I think that that's going to help us. And otherwise, I think in general about artificial intelligence, not just detection, I am really, really, I really, I'm currently working on, I, I really want to work towards the development of like safe, robust and reliable artificial intelligence. That is actually the name of my lab. If you you had seen it at UCF. So, so yeah, means whatever it takes. And I tr I'm truly believer of like going back to the fundamentals of statistics optimization and i believe like all of the problems can be really solved like everything lies there in the fundamentals of of, of our our basics and then we need to find solutions which are principled and then which are not just one problem specific solutions they need to be general enough and robust enough so that they are not easily breakable so so th so we need to really really work towards that that's that's my point right I, I truly appreciate uh, sharing all this. And of course, my last, um, you know, closing thought is um, that I uh, definitely appreciate the effort that researchers like yourself are putting in this. Uh, and also, I, I appreciate for sure the, the work of the bad guys as well, because this will trigger a mechanism yeah. <laughs> that will eventually you always, improve. You always need a critic to improve. That's the bottom Yes, line. exactly. Yeah. Which is exactly also what happens in uh, adversarial attacks yeah. and uh, reinforcement learning techniques and many other, you know, yeah, to, solutions to make, that we to make, already... Yeah, yeah. So, sorry to interrupt, but just to add a line, like to make anything safe, we really need to know first that it is unsafe. So Exactly. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. All right. That was Suradip Chakraborty, uh, Amrit Singh Bedi from uh, uh, respectively University of uh, Maryland and the Computer Science Faculty at the University of Central Florida. Guys, thank you so much for being today on this show. I'm very sure that the uh, you know the listeners of this episode will truly appreciate as much as I did having this conversation with you, of course. And uh, uh, in um, uh, a brief, we will also put some of the major links also of your uh, lab, uh, Amrit, the Safer AI Lab, um, in the show notes of this episode at the official website, datascienceathome.com. Uh, of course, don't uh, uh, you know forget to drop by our discord server and our youtube channel we have a youtube channel now it's uh, it goes by youtube.com at data science at home something like that anyway data science at home.com is your friend and your official website all the links are there and the show notes of this episode will contain uh, all about suradeep and amrit thank you so much guys yeah you're doing a really wonderful job uh, yeah thank you so much i think it <laughs> is very important that. it is very important we truly believe in it yeah very important <laughs> appreciate that yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Bye.